This is the Balkan Adventures Podcast, everyday life and experiences in the Western Balkans. And welcome to another 32 degree cloudless blue sky. Um, I'm trying to squint at the moment because I have blue eyes and I don't take um, the glare from the sun very well and I don't have sunglasses uh, over my no- normal glasses. But nevertheless, hello, it's David Bailey, an Englishman in the Balkans. Um, and a time stamped podcast. I'll be right up front with you uh, recording this early afternoon on the semi final day of the uh, 2018 World Cup when uh, later on uh, today at about 8 o'clock tonight, local time, England will play Croatia or Croatia will play England. Um, we've reserved uh, a small table at a bar. Um, in the next village along called Arbania. It's going to be packed with Croatians. Um, I'm going to be there with um, a Danish guy. We'll be the only foreigners, I think. Maybe we won't be. We'll find out. But, um, yes, we don't know what the result is because the game hasn't played yet, So, just so you know. But last night, uh, Tam and I and um, Tam's uh, young niece, Victoria, we walked the two and a half kilometres from Mastrinka, where we're staying here on the island of Chiovo, in the Adriatic um, to the town of Trogir and the reason we went last night was to catch up with an art exhibition um, that was being launched last night by an artist who's based in Sarajevo has come from Bosnia Herzegovina here to Croatia her name is Alisa Teletovic uh, she does abstract painting uh, abstract art and she had uh, the, as I say the opening of her exhibition in the uh, town or city museum uh, in Trogir. Now, I didn't know anything at all about Elisa, and I tried to do some research online, and there's quite a lot, actually. She has a website, she has a Facebook group, a uh, Facebook page, uh, and there's some videos on YouTube. So I browse those, and one of those uh, YouTube videos um, was about a small presentation she did called Where is the Body? Where is the Soul? And this was the first question I put to her last night. Oh my God, you really hit me. Oh. <laughs> oh, I have performance on that subject. Can I do it? You can. Do we have time? You have as much time as you want. <clears throat> my name is Alisa Teletovic. I was born on 14th of May, 1974. My life changed in 1993. Mostar to Chaplina, Chaplina to Split, Split to Zagreb, Zagreb, Klagenfurt, Klagenfurt, Vienna, Vienna, Australia, Sydney to Melbourne, Melbourne to Roxby Downs, Roxby Downs, Perth, Perth, Sarajevo. Where is the body and where is the soul? This particular performance is an autobiographer uh, of mine that speaks about the journey that I made in 1993. For 17 years, this journey has haunted me. Um, I was strong. I thought, okay, I can handle all these places and all these cities paint all the emotions and search for identity and who do I belong to, to Australia, to Bosnia, where am I, who am I? And then finally when I came back to Bosnia eight years ago, not even then, but I started realizing, oh gosh, I've been to so many places and I've lived in so many places and towns and cities and I've done so much. I really need to hug myself. And I really then understood how much I was true to who I was inside by painting and expressing all of that. But it's been a hugely emotional journey having to leave your home country, not knowing where you're ending up. And family. family. So you all went together? No, 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 no. I, I escaped by myself. By myself. Not knowing where I was going. 
and then ended up being refugee when I was 18. That's not an easy situation to cope with. No, you think you, this is why I say I'm strong, I can handle all this. But then you realize after all this time, you are so, it's so painful. But in order to get out of that pain, the painting saved me. The paintings were my therapy. The paintings were saying everything that I couldn't say out loud. But then in one moment I decided when I had my son in 2000, I decided, okay, no more negativity, no more poor me, why me, why did I have to go through this, why do I have to go through all the um, emotions and tears and, and, and um, feeling displaced and all that. I decided at that moment that I will look into the future as, as I am painting. Why can't I hold the sun or the moon? Why I can't fly on the sky? So those ideas and those, those um, images really helped me. And then I channeled my energy, my stories, my true um, um, self through those um, positive stories. And this was amazing because people loved it, I loved it, I felt good, my family felt good, and then I understood that we have a choice. We can always be miserable and, and, and blame some other people for things. But then, you know, the, the life goes by and you are miserable. Why not be happy and smile and love everybody? <laughs> That's my... Um, that's the way I think now. This is what, what I am. If we go back before it was time to leave Bosnia-Herzegovina, at 11 years of age, at 11 years of age when most girls are playing with dolls and, you know, and, and, and still exploring life, you present an exhibition. So what was it like back before all the chaos as a young artist, what, what were the feelings? What were the, what were the dreams back then? Uh, well, my parents divorced when I was 11. And, uh, well, as I said, the painting always saved me. It's true. Because painting that at that moment saved me. I did series that, that were, they were called Escape uh, from the Reality. And they were abstract series. At that time, in, that, in those years, abstract series, not even today people don't understand that. Abstract, what's abstract art? They don't understand that abstract art is you, it's emotion, it's what you carry, it's your heart. While other um, movements and art movements are doing um, what they're seeing outside, um, figurative expression, expressionism or, or abstraction is seeing what is inside of you and dealing with that. So for me, those series were amazing. There were 50 or so big 100 by 70 centimeters um, uh, paintings. Um, and at that point, I really didn't know what it means to be an artist, nor I had a clue what I want to be. Um, but that, that followed me all my life. And this is why, I'm he why I came to live in this world, life today, to be an artist. And I'm in peace with it, finally. But all those years ago, you know, when you talk about abstract art, for an 11-year-old, it, it must have been confusing for the adults around you to, to assimilate what you were trying to show. And the frustration must have irritated you somewhat, even at that young age? Uh, yes, that was a really hard time. Uh, my parents divorced. I was very young. Um, I didn't know what to think. You're not a grown-up person, you're a child. So yes, frustration was there. But somehow the colors of those paintings were lovely. Uh, my mom kept some of them at the back of the cupboard. And tr trust me, after all these years, she kept three that were those 100 by 70 centimeters and four little ones that I painted so long time ago. And when I saw them, when I saw how strong those works were, I understood that now, when I'm 44, I didn't understand that then. Now, when I look at them, and I have them in my art studio, I will, you know, they're, they're forever in my, um, 
collection. I will not sell those. But the colors are lovely. They are full of vibrances. They, they are just vibrant. They are dynamic. Um, there are even some aliens uh, looking paintings. This alien walking, you know, it's like, what? <laughs> But um, yeah, it was frustrated, but it was a beginning. It was the beginning. I was on the internet earlier on this afternoon and I was quite fascinated by the fact that when you arrive in, um, in Australia and you, you, you do formal education, you go to your university and, and, and whatever, um, you end up painting emus, you start to study um, subjects that are most probably more associated with the Aboriginal people or First Nations people um, of Australia. How did that come about? Uh, I fell in love with Australian outback. Uh, we lived in the Roxby Downs, uh, close to Aborigines, for two and a half, two and a half years. Uh, this is the time when I really flourished. Um, I fell in love with emus because emus were a metaphor for family. They were always together, uh, passing the street or the road, um, uh, sitting next to the trees, um, enjoying each other companies, and very soft and feminine creatures. Uh, while I never had uh, inspiration to paint kangaroo, always in emu. And I started painting uh, when I saw the first emu in my life. Something happened, I was inspired, I started painting. Uh, then as soon I had an exhibition in Roxby Downs in Cultural Center and Rodney Mitchell, one of the Cultural Center officers, said to me a really important thing. You know Aboriginal, Aboriginal people say they marry for life. I've been with my husband for 25 years. <laughs> so there is a metaphor. And, and also they say um, uh, the, the landscape and the outback is so vast and so beautiful that w once you see it and once you experience it, it runs in your veins. And that was for me Roxby Downs and South Australia and emus and eucalyptuses, beautiful black trees, dead on one side, green on the other. And this is what I painted. People loved our series. I sold I think I have only one or two left in the in, from from EMU series. They love them. But the outback is remote. It's not even Bosnia Herzegovina, which people say is where is it in Europe? I mean, the outback is even more obscure, if I can use that word. Did you did you feel at all lonely or disjointed? No, 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 no. Never lonely, never disjointed. Uh, in a Roxby Downs, it was the best period of our lives. We, uh, we just had such amazing energy there. People from all over the world coming to work in the mining industry, uh, alone with our families. We became one huge family. Everyone supported each other, um, traveled to Adelaide, to, um, um, to Vayala, uh, 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 really uh, sm amazing small country towns. Um, even uh, Lake Eyre, which is um, major which is really empty, um, uh, sandy, remote, uh, 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 salty uh, lake. Uh, that, that, that year when we came to live there, the, it was flooded. And then suddenly people were using boats to, uh, you know, fly away with <laughs> on that lake that suddenly became lake it, it, the white color of the sand of the of the uh, s those salty uh, desert um, beautiful horizons um, it happens something to you you are just so much inspired by it even now I want to paint those lakes I just need time to to boil up, you know, to, to come to to suddenly to to be uh, to be ripe. So they're inside in my head somewhere. I just need to have time when they say I'm ready now, Lisa, to paint me. You know, I've spoken to a lot of people that have left um, Bosnia Herzegovina throughout the chaos 
or due to the chaos of the 1990s. It is a very emotional period in people's lives and it's not something that should be dwelled on or necessarily stimulated. But I always have to ask, which is sometimes a painful question, having to leave with trauma... What is it like when you make that decision to come back? Well, you always, you always, you always live uh, and, and, and breathe with trauma, always. But you have to find a way to be, to be a winner. You have to find a way to smile. You have to find a way to overcome all the pain. You have to. Because life is really so beautiful we need to be grateful that we have this life we have to be grateful that we are breathing so I'm trying to get people to ask themselves about those issues because who knows tomorrow maybe we'll be food for the birds and so I'm enjoying every day. I'm working very hard. I'm painting almost every day. Uh, I'm designing. This is my Kafsan, um, um, hand-painted, original, unique, and only one. Um, some people can see that this is really amazing stuff. Uh, it, I'm trying to develop the, the market. Um, Bosnia and Herzegovina is a small market, especially for expressive um, artists because I'm dealing with me and they are still not dealing with themselves. So they can't handle. So that must be, now that must be frustrating. It is, it is frustrating and thank you for seeing that. It is frustrating and no one sees that. But my mom passed away last year and uh, it woke me up. I suddenly saw things clearly, uh, pain, a fear goodbye I, d I don't want to be fearful I don't want to be um, restless my aim is to paint to create to smile to try to get people to love each other to, that, that's why this exhibition is called kisses of the uh, heel kisses because heels are together some, in some places they are apart some places they are together then cheek to cheek to cheek and they are there standing for centuries and they're still okay. The sun, the thunder, whatever, they're still okay. And we people are the same. We should be staying together. We should be understanding that we have only one life. What is the reaction though to people in, in all honesty? I mean, you've come all the way from Sarajevo to Trogir, um, a beautiful place on the Adriatic, but even so, you know, th th there's there's a wonderful exhibition, all hung. Um, I, I find it, and I'm, a, a, I have to be honest with you, I'm an art philistine, but I'm still enjoying looking at everything. Um, so, if, if it appeals to me as a philistine, surely there must be some hope that over the next few days or whatever, that people are going to come in, they're going to really get excited, and of course, for you, they, they're going to buy things, but. It must be a worry. I mean, you've left Sarajevo, you've come here, and you have got no idea. Is this going to be a success or is this whatever? That must be difficult sometimes. It is difficult. I admit it. But I don't want it to be a difficult. I'm trying to be everything but not difficult. So this is why I woke up at 6 o'clock, drove all the way. I was here at 12.30. Um, it's a long day, long night. But I'm excited. You know, if I touch one heart, if one person goes away knowing a little bit more, appreciating a little bit more, then the, I suppose my message of the hills and my message of the color and expression is, is there to uh, leave the positive mark, the sun in people's eyes. And, and, and I'll, I'm happy for that. That's all. I, and plus, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in Trogi. Trogi is a wonderful place. I've never been here before, so it's full of cultural, um, amazing, uh, I suppose I can see now uh, it's already dark, but tomorrow I'm going to sightseeing. I'm going to the seaside. You, you will not see me. I, I, I mean, I'm so excited. Even though it's a long, long, long day today. But 
it's all good. You've got a lot to do. There are people starting to want to come in. Yes. Um, it's going to be your evening. So it's all ready. I'm, I'm, Thank you. <laughs> I'm, go- I'm, I'm going. I'm going to ask you a final question. Um, I have no idea how you're going to react to this, but. You know, when you look at people, especially younger people from Bosnia Herzegovina today, their dream is to run away to all the cities that they think have streets paved with gold. They have no idea that they're going to run into maybe their worst possible nightmare. But they have their dreams. You've had to leave, not because you wanted to, because you had to, and you've come back. What would you say, with the experience that you've had, to young people, regardless of their ethnic background in Bosnia and Herzegovina, who want to run? Everyone needs to go and find their purpose. They all need to see how America looks like, Germany looks like, Australia looks like, and, and embrace the, 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 the hardship and the beauty of what they've learned. Because when, when, when they have experiences, then they can appreciate who they are and where they are coming from. If they don't know that, then they can't fix the country. They have to go and see that other people live together nicely, majority of people live together in a, in a peaceful environment and no one hurts each other. Majority. We are having a bit of a funny situation in the world now. But I would say they all need to go experience for themselves what it means to pay rent, what it means to find a, a, a physical job, quirky job, jobs that you know uh, that you, you can't really find your profession just like that. You have to build your your your, uh, your life, and then when you finish your school, when you finish your university, then you can uh, uh, go for for the job that you are uh, obviously um, you know been studying for. But it takes time. It goes you, years go by. It doesn't happen straight away. And in that process you are learning who you are, you're learning about yourself, about the society you are living, and eventually those experiences will make you, or not, a better person. And then when you come back to any country you are from, then perhaps you will find that some minuses were not that minus, and some pluses were not that minus. You know what I mean. And then you just have to find balance. What's important? The important thing is love. We really need to have love in our lives. And we have life when we are grateful for this life we are living now. And then we can say to to other people next to us, it's okay. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay. We don't love you less. That was Elisa Teletovic, uh, an artist from Bosnia-Herzegovina, launching her exhibition, her latest exhibition of her abstract art here in Trogir last night. To find out more about Elisa, look in the show notes below. Uh, I'll put the links to her Facebook presence um, and YouTube and anything else that I can so that you can find out more about her. Thanks a lot for listening. It's uh, really gratefully appreciated that you do give your time. Uh, It would be really cool if you could let us know whether... You listen through iTunes or through your favorite podcatcher service and what that service is. And also where you actually listen um, to the podcast, whether you're listening in the gym, going out for a run or while you peel the onions for the evening meal. So that's it from me, David Bailey, an Englishman in the Balkans. And I'll catch you on the next Balkan Adventures podcast. Stay safe. To find out more about us and where we live, why not check out our blog at anenglishmaninthebalkans.com. See you next time.